Hello, 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 good afternoon, good morning if it's morning where you live, uh, or good evening if it's evening where you live. <laughs> you may be tuning in from various places around the world, you may be watching this back. Either way, all is well, all is beautiful. Hello, beautiful bright souls, hello, hello, welcome to this video, welcome to Ascension to Love with Alice, welcome to the Isis Dream Temple, which this is going live in, although it may be posted in a couple of other places afterwards. Um, so this video is to help to bring a little bit of assistance, understanding, compassion to those that are feeling it all right now. Oh my, are we feeling it all? The really fascinating thing is that, you know, as human beings, we're, we're vessels, right? We are vessels. We are divine channels. That beautiful spine of ours is an antenna, right? And the nervous system that we have, you know, is always transmitting, receiving, putting out, uh, energy frequency, right, vibrations, um, electricity, and receiving it as well, right, through our heart space, through our solar plexus, through our navel point, through many different um, areas of our body, because that's exactly what we're at. we're an energetical being, right, we're, a, um, <clears throat> we're an energetical being, we're a non-physical being, driving this human body, right, utilizing this human body to make change on this planet, right, that's the beauty of what it is that we're here to do. Um, so I'm coming live to you today because, oh, for the past few days, there has been a lot of energy running through many, many people. I've received uh, countless messages asking how to, um, how to deal with uh, everything. You know, when you feel those ups and those downs, when you're feeling all the, uh, the spiky energy, all the fragmented energy, right? When you're uh, feeling fine and happy one moment and then, you know, the next moment you're feeling like... <laughs> You know, the whole world's coming down. You just feel really heavy and dense and like, you know, what's going on? Why is that happening? And what to do, right? And it's funny because, you know, time is... Time isn't linear, right? In the human world, we kind of have this linear time, you know? We have this Gregorian calendar that most of us go by and it counts the minutes and the hours and the days and the weeks and the months and the years, etc., etc. Except that's not really how time works. Time is uh, circular, right? It's a spiral. It's a beautiful spiral. And um, so what that means is like we can find ourselves receiving energetic footprints from things that have happened around this time of year, previous years. We can find ourselves as we're walking, as we're out and about receiving energetical footprints and um, information from other people as well, right? And as well as ourselves, as well as past memories that we may not have even kind of realized are still kind of lingering somewhere because we think that they're in the past, but really everything is happening now. And that can, be, that can be something a little interesting to get your head around, but everything is happening now, and that's how quantum healing works, right? Uh, that's why it's so efficient, it's so profound. It's so beautiful. I have a massive big bumblebee just right in front of me. And bumblebees, or bees in general, are very, uh, they're messengers, right? They bring messages from the dimensions. The bees are incredible, you know, Phys like physically they shouldn't be able to fly, but they do, they don't know that, right? So they carry on flying and that's exactly what we're here to do. We're here to unlearn everything that we've learned and heal everything that's um, causing obstruction within us, right? That perhaps is its uh, own video. Um, so what to do? What to do and why do we feel it? So not to mention the, you know, I already alluded to kind of like, you know, the energetical footprints that are, around right so i mean what was happening this time last year this time last year if you're in the uk for example this time last year um although lockdown wasn't officially called it was mentioned right it was um it, we knew that it was coming it was mother's day this time last year um i think or maybe that was the weekend after i'm not sure it might have been the weekend after but we the whole country kind of felt that anxiety there was toilet roll shortage right <laughs> people were panic buying their root chakras were going a little bit crazy on the uh, imbalance scale of the what if I don't have enough right and um, once again we send love and compassion to anyone that is feeling those energies again a year later um, being a chalice which everyone is right an empath which everyone is everyone is an empath in their own right we are here on this planet to help transmute energies, right? So sometimes we are feeling energies that are our own and sometimes we're picking up on others as well. Something that you can do, something that's really good is, you know, the, the straighter your spine, the more you're actually able to um, tune into where it's coming from as well, just because that spine, like I said, is that antenna. But if you put your hand on your stomach, on your solar plexus, like right here, and your other hand on your heart, 
you know, you can just kind of tune in and just ask, you know, what, is, what am I feeling? The first thing to do is to pinpoint what it is that you're feeling. So, for example, I'm going to share with you how I felt today. Um, and this is valid for anyone, regardless of where they are in their spiritual journey, whether you class yourself as seasoned or a beginner or whatever frequency or dimension you're actually able to access as well. So this is for those that even surpass the fifth dimension and access those realms. And, you know, we still all live in this third dimension, right? Um so there is still work to transmute, still things to do here. So the reason why I say that is because everyone feels it, right? The only difference is, is how quickly we're able to process it and how quickly we're able to acknowledge it. And that's the key thing here um, for not letting it throw your day. So I woke up this morning and it was a bit of a slow start for me, right? It was a bit of a slow start. I woke up and I just, you know, I took it really kind of leisurely. Um, I didn't have anywhere I needed to be, right? And um, although there are things for me that I want to do that I'll be inspired to do today that I know... Um, I'm really excited to do today. There's no time limit on that, right? Um, so I woke up, I did my dream journaling, I um, wrote down all the messages from my dream and interpreted those and um, I just kind of took it really slow, not turning on any technology at this point, right? Because our phones have signal and when we're receiving messages, even if we open them or not, if our phone's receiving a message through energy transference, we're actually receiving the energy of whomever that is messaging, right? So <clears throat> so sometimes you know you'll find a message from someone or you'll um or you'll be connected to someone heart to heart not necessarily physically in the in the same room as you but somewhere um you'll be kind of thinking about a person and um you know that's that's how telepathy works right that's energy transference right so we can receive that energy from them so if someone's needing help you know you might start to absorb that if you don't kind of um first see what you need so that's a really important thing each day that we all need to kind of start with so if you are feeling heavy and you do have those moments the first thing that we want to do to really anchor in our own light and sovereignty is to make sure that we have what we need so just tune in just sit for a moment just ask yourself how are you feeling you know how are you feeling today so I was feeling a bit kind of not raring to go but not unbalanced or anything like that I was feeling quite balanced whereas like yesterday I had to do some um, balancing work because I woke up feeling a little bit out of sorts because um, in dream time I'd done a lot of healing right um, so this morning after that I turned on my phone and through the space of today we don't even realize how many people we're interacting with so this isn't including any social media that I've been on um, so this isn't including any people any posts that I've scrolled past on Instagram or on Facebook but what um but I've probably spoken to about 15, 20 people today, right? And every time you speak to someone, you're receiving and exchanging energy with them, right? I love you too. Oh, beautiful, beautiful souls. I love you all. So if you're turning on your phone in the day and your energy isn't yet anchored, you're going to start to transfer energy with people, okay? And and we like, and the only person that you need to kind of, um, the only person that you need to really um practice sovereignty with is yourself and everyone else will mirror that right everyone else will mirror that so as long as you're starting your day off right before you turn on your phone then whatever whoever is messaging you whoever needs help you're able to help right you're able to offer them whatever it is that they need right and that's really important but it's fascinating because I spent a little bit of time replying to messages and replying to friends and clients and various people and um you know, offering a little bit of support, a little bit of direction. And I had a lot of messages requesting this video. So this is why it's here. I'm hoping it's helpful so far. Um, and I will actually at the end do like a three point, do this, do this, do this, and then you're good. Um, but just to kind of give you a bit of back background as well. And then I turned my phone back onto airplane mode. And this is really important that we do this, right? Because once again, the phone has signal. Um, it interferes with our own electrical um circuitry actually it really does right whether or not we have crystals and shungite around it and on it you know we're still kind of feeling that uh that push and pull we're still kind of waving in the wind of you know um so anyway so i found it really fascinating um because then i turned off my airplane uh, i turned off the phone i put it on airplane mode and then i you know went and sorted myself out and you know had some food and did all of that and um put on some music and this is this is the first thing that you can do right if you're if you're feeling that your energy is a little bit kind of like oh I'm not sure about this um a little bit kind of heavy or dense or a little bit kind of not feeling really elated you can put on some really high pace music and when I say high pace I don't mean you know grime rap that's got a load of curse words and a load of kind of derogatory things and you know I don't mean that type of stuff I mean put something that is very tuned in 
to the high frequency. So I love Fia. There's an artist called Fia. Uh, there's many artists that I love. Um, sometimes I'll put on Fia and she um, has FIA and she has the best music to kind of really anchor in your, your sovereignty, your energy, right? Like it's re- it just feels golden to me when I listen to her. <clears throat> so I put that on and I danced around my, uh, I danced around the year a little bit, <laughs> you know? doesn't matter um it doesn't matter how like you know whether you dance or not it doesn't matter whether you can dance whether you've got rhythm you just have to move your body that's the key thing right we gotta we gotta move our body if we're not moving our body the energy that is trying to release and trying to be processed just stays there and it gets recycled back into our emotional body back into our mental body right because we've got those four bodies we've got that spiritual mental emotional and physical so if you're releasing emotion or if you're feeling emotion you've got to move your body to allow that to actually fully express. You've got to also feel it, right? We can't ignore it. A lot of us have had a, have got a tendency. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, fear is amazing, hey? Mm-hmm. David Pramal is also really awesome, right? She, um, she does a lot of the uh, Sanskrit mantras and things like that. Um, there's an artist called Mary Isis, which is really, uh, who's really good. Many, many, many more. Um, but yeah, and that's why classical music is so great as well, right? Because there's no words to it. So you're not getting that, um, you're not receiving the energy of whatever the artist was feeling when they wrote it. So if you're listening to an artist who was high when they wrote a song, guess what you're receiving? If you're, you know, if you're listening to an artist who um, was going through a tough time and they're expressing it and you're not feeling that, guess what you're going to be receiving, right? So it's kind of like, and, th- and those songs are really great for if we are feeling like that and we need a little kickstart to help that energy run through us before we move it to a higher pace and a higher beat because the next thing that's really important is we've got to honor what we're feeling. So it's fascinating because I paused today, I'd um, replied to some messages, I'd cleared my energy straight after that, um, which is, you know, it's our own duty to be looking after our own energy, right? Never worry about what your energy... So if you're doing that, you never have to worry about what energy is coming in at you, right? So if you ever need help, please do not think... I can't reach out because my energy isn't good. Still reach out because it's up to the individual as well that's receiving that message, whether they open that message. You know, I received some messages late last night and I saw that they were there, but I wasn't in a space emotionally, um, mentally or physically to actually receive those messages in the highest light. So I chose not to open them until I, until I was anchored today, right? And then I could respond from a much more, um, a much more balanced and... Um, in a way where I could channel for them, right? So when I was replying, I was I was channeling as well, right? It wasn't just me speaking, you know? That's really important. Um, but that's not to the, necessarily the person that's, you know, if you're not yet there and you need the assistance, you gotta ask, ask people, right? That's that's why that's why we're available, right? That's why people like us are available. That's why you have friends available. Um, but yeah, I was feeling grief today. I was feeling a lot of grief and a lot of sadness. I was feeling... Um, kind of spikes of rejection coming in as well which I found really fascinating because um, I don't tend to feel rejection that much I've done a lot of healing work around rejection right around rejection of um, of, you know parental rejection sibling friends persecution and um, you know lovers you know I've done a lot of work on that I'm doing a lot of healing to a point where you know it's rare that I feel the rejection energy like I always understand what's happening further and deeper Um, so I found that utterly fascinating so I just sat with it for a little bit. I put my hand on my solar plexus, my navel point, because I was picking it up through that connection to all, right? Because that's what the navel chakra is, right? For those who have an active navel chakra right now, um, that's how we can tune in to what's happening in the world. That's how we can draw in collective guidance, right? To tune into where the collective is at. And it felt like it was collective uh, grief coming in, right? Collective rejection coming in, collective fear coming in again. And once again, it's linked to that um, time being uh, circular rather than linear. So, you know, a lot of countries at this point last year were feeling that grief and that fear of, you know, what's going to happen that, you know, people were losing their jobs already this point last year. So there's a lot of rejection happening there. You know, there's much stuff happening. So I'm tuning in and I'm like, okay, is this one of my friends? Is this one of the people that I call family? Is this one of the people in my group? Right. Because, you know, anyone that follows anyone that I know, anyone that is in the group, Uh, here where this is broadcast anyone that follows me on youtube on facebook you know every day i send everyone blessings right i send everyone blessings and i wish for the highest there so i tune in and i'm like okay is there someone in the group that i need to just spend a little bit more time and energy um focusing love towards them right 
And it doesn't take any major effort to do that, right? It doesn't take any effort to do that. It is literally just kind of you ask and it's given, right? The angels look after all that. Um, and the guides, right, the celestial realm, they all look after that. So I was just sitting with this feeling of grief. And it's funny because when you sit in just a moment of, without distraction, my phone's still in airplane mode, um, I turned the music off and I was just sat kind of, I wasn't eating, I wasn't drinking, I was just sat. And I'm like, why am I feeling grief? What is this? What does this feel like? Where is this coming from? You know, and I was being shown like shadows of memories as well that are in my human life, right? That I've probably said, oh, I've healed those, but still shadows of them were showing up, right? For me to embrace again. And that's okay. You know, we can heal something and think that it's fully healed, but there might still be a little fragment of it that we still need to go in and clear. So when we're tuning into the, um, when we're feeling everything and when we're tuning in, you know, the opportunity that we have there is to actually go, okay, well, this is something that still feels a bit of rejection, right? And that's rejection within ourselves. And this is where the uh, rejection piece came into what I was feeling today. Because I was feeling that grief at one point and I was like, where, does, where is this grief coming from? And it showed me some uh, snippets of, um, of past memories from a few years back. I'm like, oh, okay. And it was actually grief for, for me, right? For who I thought I was, Right. And, um, and letting that part of me go. And, and many people will be feeling this right now. The collective, the reason why I'm sharing this is because the collective is feeling this right now because we're in rebirth stage. We've just entered spring, right? Um, so we're still in that birthing canal. We've just gone through that death stage. We're in rebirth stage. And this um, manifestation portal is so poignant, right? Because we're choosing to jump on a higher timeline. But that also means that we kind of have to let go of who we have thought that we were previously. Does that make sense? So we may spend a lifetime... Uh, training to be uh, training to have a certain skill in a certain vocation right and then we realize that that's not actually what our soul wants us to do because that's just something that was kind of impressed upon us as a child right and we inherited that you know um or which country we should live in or which you know area we should live in or like or you know how we should dress or what we should you know any it can be anything so i found that really fascinating because there is a lot of shift and, and movement right now for people um, so I felt like although there was snippets of my own memories coming up, it was more collective that I was transmuting for, right? But the, um, but the memories that I had were key codes for me to access that feeling within myself and remember how I felt there and to actually go, okay, let's go deep there, okay? And that aspect of self is where the rejection comes in because I've rejected seeing that, um, feeling that clearly or you know six seven years ago I rejected feeling that clearly I wanted to hush it down and we can see that right when we're um I'm laughing because I've got some um white doves uh to the side of me hold on let me show you can you see those there's the holy thorn right and there's the white doves and they're um (laughs) they're having a lovely time and being very noisy (laughs) but in a very beautiful way anyway um where was I at so a lot of times if we're feeling emotion we can have this kind of tendency to want to go oh shh, 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 you know you're okay you're okay shh, right and hush ourselves or hush a baby or hush a child or something like that when we hush ourselves or hush something like that we don't express we don't express and we don't honor how we're actually feeling and that's the trouble right that's why it gets stuck and that's why you get heavy right so we gotta we gotta allow that emotion to run through us, right? Because once again, we are that chalice, we are that vessel, we're that divine vessel. If we don't allow that emotion to run through us, it gets stuck. It causes an, an obstruction, and then every time that same emotion runs through, which however it shows up from wherever it comes from, it then starts to build, right? And then it becomes a uh, you know then it becomes an emotional imbalance, and then it becomes a um, compounded physical illness, right? Anyone with lung issues, this is a big one for, because that's where grief is held in the lungs. So if you've ever had any um, lung troubles, that's from grief, friends. So we've got to keep searching for that to illuminate it, to embrace it. And that's, that's where the rejection can come in. That's why rejection is the biggest thing that as humans we have to heal. So I spent a little bit of time doing that. And as soon as, and what that looked like was literally just acknowledging it, feeling it, allowing myself to feel the emotion and not hushing it down. And then bringing that Christ light energy in. Now, once again, Christ light is not specific to a person that may ha- may or may not have walked the earth two thousand years ago. That was just a title that person had. Um, Christ light is this golden energy that um, of uncon- of pure unconditional love, right? 
of pure and conditional love. So it's also the energy that uh, the Buddha has, right? Uh, Lord Maitreya, if you know those ascended beings. Um, you know, unicorns have this energy. Oh, there's butterflies here. Oh my gosh. That's the second butterfly I've seen today, you guys. I've not seen any butterflies yet this year. And I've just seen two whilst talking and doing this type of work. So this is incredible because the last time I was journaling, this is the third thing that you can do, right? Journal. Allow yourself just to express it on paper. Write it down. And um, a butterfly flew, pa uh, flew past my door as I was doing that. And a butterfly just flew past now as I'm saying this, right? And, you know, butterflies, what are they? They're transformation, right? But to transform from caterpillar to butterfly, they have to literally dissolve their body. Their body has to literally die, right? Their body is literally disintegrating in a pile of goo, <laughs> right? And the butterfly just doesn't know any difference. So the butterfly does it and goes, oh, I'm so excited to get my wings. Oh my gosh, I wonder what color they're going to be. I love all colors. It could be any color. It's just going to be marvelous. And they just do it, right? And then they emerge after the cocoon phase. And that's where we're at right now. We've just been through that cocoon phase. And not only have we just been through that cocoon phase, we're now in the birthing canal. We're now kind of breaking out of that chrysalis. That's what we're doing. Or like the chick breaking out of the shell. That's what we're doing right now. So you've got to feel got to utilize that energy and allow it to express right and do it in a, you know and that's not to do it in a volatile way right we don't want to project this at anyone or anything like that because that's what happens when we are experiencing emotions and we don't actually acknowledge them is they just start bouncing around within us and then they start to project to people and we don't want to do that right so getting outside i'm sat beneath a wonderful marigold is it marigold no uh what are you called maybe you are i don't know um I should know, I literally just, um, we used, we worked with some of this beautiful plant in uh, <laughs> yesterday's um, Equinox uh, Isis Magdalene um, initiation incense. Are you Marigold? We'll, we'll find out later. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, but literally get outside, get earthed, go sit with nature, allow in somewhere open where you can breathe. <sighs> just breathe deeply and allow mother earth to do what she does best she's your divine mother right you know and our mothers they comfort us right they hold us while we cry right whether you physically need to cry or not you know you can just literally be here and i'm just sat here on this bench sometimes i will sit with my back to a tree i'll go to chalice well and i'll literally sit with mama you mama or papa you right there's two yew trees magnolia thank you yes it is magnolia thank you kelly i was like i knew it was an m and i'm like nope yep that's not the right word thank you yes it is a magnolia Oh, I love you so much. <laughs> um, anyway, so to kind of summarize, I just wanted to share with you a little bit as to how, like, how I'm feeling and to know that you're not alone when you're feeling heavy, when you're feeling dense, right? Everyone feels that. But the, the main difference between whether it knocks us off kilter, whether it knocks us off our feet or not, is whether we're acknowledging and allowing the emotion to move through you. If this is something that's new to you, it, it might be a little bit more difficult, right? At, at times, right? It's a process. Um, it was the same yesterday. Yesterday I felt like I was on fire, right? As I was walking down the street, um, cause I could feel the energy and I could feel the energy of the past few days of the, of the protests building up and I could feel that. Right. So I felt like I was on fire in my core and I was like, whew, you know, this is a lot of energy to kind of move through the body. Um, but still we, you know, we find it, we honor it. We let it express what it needs to express, however it needs to do that. And oftentimes it just needs to play the emotion through. It just needs to play it through within you. And you just need to go, I love you. And bring that golden Christ-like energy into your core. And ask the angels to help transmute it for you. You can call upon the lilac fire, uh, the lilac uh, fire of source, which is a very graceful lilac flame of transmutation. Or you can call upon the violet flame, right? Which is a lot more kind of, you know... <laughs> um, but yeah, get outside, move your body, sort your own energy out first whenever you start your day and reset it throughout the day, especially if you, if you run a business off your phone, off technology, if you are on social media, if you're on your phone at all, if you have a phone near you, you need to be resetting your day, right? So turn it onto airplane mode a few times a day. I'm going to be turning mine onto airplane mode straight after this live, right? And allow yourself to reset, right? To reground to notice how you're feeling and if you need to do anything else like just ask your body what does it need sometimes you need to go run around in a circle even if you don't run it doesn't matter run around run around your garden run around outside just burn off some energy right because that's what it needs to do it needs to express itself and move through you and especially physically so that it fully releases you need to ground by getting outside into the fresh air you know journaling is fantastic you don't even have to read the journal you can burn it afterwards but you've got to let your body express what it's feeling the last thing we want to do is, is hush and shush it right um and then music is always a beautiful and very sacred way to raise that frequency up and 
like a few of us um, know the artist Fia. She's great. Um, I posted I posted a song of hers on my um, main Facebook profile earlier today. Um, but yeah, just listen, listen to your body, and it's just a process. The more that you do that, the more that you get into a habit of kind of acknowledging where you are, just being aware and catching it before you carry on about your day hustling and bustling about. The more that you can kind of notice when there is a shift in your own energy, and then um, and then you know be attentive to it in that in that moment. Like the more you can get back to that happy, joyous, butterfly, beautiful, rainbow, unicorn, angelic self, right? Just really blissful, really joyous, even if you don't resonate with those, uh, those other words. But you want to have a really easeful, happy, abundant life. And that's, that means bringing your vibration up. So that means that when you're feeling heavy, you acknowledge it, you address it, you comfort it, you love it, you welcome it in. And you let it express and be so that it can join you in the happy place, right? So I'm sending so much love to each and every one of you. Um, I hope this video was helpful. And, you know, if you are looking for a little bit more guidance as well, you know, you can book a one-to-one -one in with us. We can do some quantum healing. And actually, if there is a memory or a pattern that's coming up, that's been really knocking you off for a, for a long while, then that's where a quantum healing would be really, really beneficial, right? So do check out the services on my Facebook page. They're still on there and they've still got the reduced price on today because um, there has been a winter reduction on and now it's spring they're going back to full price so if you are called to that definitely have a little look um or even the remote attunements that i do the remote um arcturian pleiadian um energy body ascension um tune-ups okay oh thank you mia yeah absolutely just have a little look at which one you would prefer my darling um and i'll pop you a message afterwards my phone's going off for a little bit but then um absolutely i'll message you back okay um but yeah, have a little look. If any of that resonates, just let me know. Just give me a shout and we'll get you booked in. And um, and if not, you know, the Facebook group, the Isis Dream Temple has a lot of uh, content in there, a lot of positive, high vibrational stuff. So if you're not watching from the Dream Temple already, um, yeah, join it. We have a lot of fun. We'll be doing a card reading at some point in the next few days as well. So make sure you turn on your notifications, right? So you get to see when I go live. Um, and I love you all. Have the best Sunday. Happy spring equinox or autumn if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, and just enjoy these powerful manifesting energies right now because they are so profound, right? Massive, massive gateway jumps. And if you missed the equinox manifestation portal uh, workshop that we did, the activation and the healing that we did on Friday night. Um, and if you want access to that call, it's by donation, right? So that can be a dollar, ten dollars, a pound, ten pounds, whatever whatever suits your pocket and what's you know whatever works for you best right now um but if that calls you as well it's a very powerful call and it will very much help you release shift and jump onto that higher timeline right so anyway so much love to you all have the beautiful most best incredible day and i will see you live very soon Mwah. bye